Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to perform web crawling in R. Web crawling is about collecting URLs from the internet. It's a little different from web scraping, as web scraping is about extracting content from web pages. But in this tutorial, you're going to see how both can be used hand in hand. In this example, I'll be using Metacritic, a famous rating website for games and movies. We're interested in PlayStation 5. We want to be able to crawl all of the PlayStation 5 URLs and then go through each of those URLs and extract the title, the meta score, and the user score. So without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. Now before you start web crawling, it's important to know where to start crawling from. So in our case, since we're using Metacritic, crawling from the starting homepage would be a bad idea because Metacritic is a large website. So it's going to take a lot of time to crawl through a lot of those URLs and plus you're more likely to have your crawling blocked. So since we're interested in PlayStation 5 games, we need to go to the page that has those PlayStation 5 games. So from the home page, if we click on games and then we click on PS5 and then click on games of all time, it's going to show us a list of the PlayStation 5 games that were reviewed on Metacritic. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, we're going to notice that we have four pages of games. Now that we're here, we can use this URL as a good starting point for our crawling. So let's get to the code. Now first we have to load in the necessary libraries. In this case, you will need to install our crawler if you don't have it. And possibly you might need to have the Java development kit installed. If you do, I do have an installation guide that I've done before. I'll be able to link it in the description below and you can follow along with it. So I'm going to highlight these libraries and run them. And now let's get started. The main function is the rcrawler function. And it takes in quite a lot of parameters, but we'll focus on some of them today. The first one being the website. This would be the starting website that you want the crawling to begin from. So in this case, it would be this URL over here. So we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it in here. Next, what we want to do is we want to find the pattern that we want to look for, the pattern of the URL. What this means is we want to know what each of these URLs for the PlayStation 5 games mean. Because we're not interested in looking at all these other URLs in the tabs and also to the right of the page, we just want the PlayStation 5 games. So I'm going to open one game as an example. And in this case for Elden Ring, we notice that the URL has a specific pattern. It has slash game slash PlayStation 5 slash Elden Ring. So we could use this to our advantage. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure to include this pattern in here. And the way to do that is you're going to use a parameter called crawl URL filter, which is, simple, which is simply a regex pattern that we're passing through. So in this case, I'm going to pass in the game, pass in PlayStation 5, and then just leave it like that. Awesome. Some other parameters of interest would be the number of cores. This would be the number of CPU cores that you want to dedicate for this crawling. Now, of course, by default, it's going to use the available cores on your PC, uh, but you want to make sure that you're leaving this to a reasonable number. It seems that four is a reasonable number according to the documentation. And then same thing with the number of connections. This just represents the number of processes you, you want to run in parallel. Now, of course, the more the process is, the more advanced that this crawling is going to be. But we also want to keep this at a reasonable number as well. So we'll keep it equal to the number of cores. There's also the max depth parameter. And this is going to determine how deep do you want the crawler to go from the starting page? How deep do you want it to look for those URLs? Now, since that the URLs that we're looking for are just simply the game slash PlayStation 5, we can set the max depth to 1. But by default, this max depth would be 10. And of course, the bigger the max depth, probably the longer it would take for the uh, crawler to run. And then last but not least, we want to look at save on disk. And we want to set this equals to false. This is to prevent the files from being downloaded and saved on your machine. So when you perform the web crawling, what it's doing is it's going through all of those crawled URLs, saving them as HTML files onto your machine. So by setting this equals to false, it won't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, the crawling has been complete. And if you notice, a new variable has been automatically created called the index variable. If we open that up, it is just simply a data frame that contains all of the crawled URLs. So if you notice here, all the URLs have that same pattern that we indicated, the game slash PlayStation 5. 
But the issue is that it seems to have collected a few more URLs than we needed. So for example, for the Elden Ring, it's also co uh, collected the Elden Ring uh, slash critic reviews, Elden Ring slash user reviews, and same thing with the rest of these games. So there are going to be a couple of things that we need to do to limit this. Now, the way to do that is we're going to have to pass in uh, another a regex pattern inside of this crawl URL filter. And this would be the caret character along with another slash, close the bracket, put a plus sign, and put a dollar sign. And what this simply means is you want it to find any character that does not match this slash. So this is what the character, uh, the caret is doing here. It's making sure to match all the characters except for the slash. And it has to be mentioned at least one time. And then the dollar sign indicates the end of the URL. So if we were to run it this time, we're going to notice that it did run quicker. And we're going to notice that the index has now been reduced to 105. And if we look at it, you're going to finally see that we only have the URLs without that, without the extra ones, without the user reviews or the critic reviews. So this is exactly what we need. Now the next step is how do we extract the contents? So we're interested in getting the title name, the meta score value, and the user score value. And the best way to do this is by using the content scraper function. And the content scraper function is just simply a function to allow you to test whether your uh, HTML extractions are going to work. And it works with both CSS patterns and XPath patterns. So in this case, I will be using the XPath pattern. So in this case, I'm going to pass in the testing URL, which will be the PlayStation 5 game here. And then I'm going to use the XPath patterns, which simply is going to take a um, vector of the patterns that you're interested in looking, in looking at. So in this case, I'm interested in looking at the title here. So I'm going to click on the inspect. And if I look at Elden Ring, you're going to notice that it's sitting in a div class called product title, which is then has an A tag, and then it also has the H1 tag. So the way, the way to write that XPath pattern would be to simply say uh, a double slash div, which basically means look through the entire document for the div tags that have a class name equals to product underscore title. And then we want to put another slash for the A, and then another slash for the H1. So if I were to just simply run this the way it is, it's going to show me the name of the game. Perfect. So now I'm just going to copy paste the patterns for the meta score and the user score. Okay, so right here, what I did is this is the X path for the uh, meta score, and then this is the path for the user score. Notice that I've used the starts with. Uh, that's because it. That's because if we do look at the code over here, we're going to notice that. In the div class right here, it has a meta score W X large game positive. Now keep in mind, this could be negative for games that are low scoring. So we just want to make sure that we're capturing the first part of this. And then the same thing applies for the user score as well. So if I were to run this, whoops, we have to make sure we're closing this properly and running it. You're going to notice that it extracts the game name, the meta score and the user score and it's all right. Excellent. So now we can go back to our R crawler function and further refine it. There will be some further parameters that we'll fill in and we'll talk about those. The first one being the data URL filter. And what this is going to do is it's simply going to be the same value as we set for the crawl URL filter. Now the difference between these two parameters is that the crawl URL filter will only crawl the URLs that have this pattern versus the data URL is going to crawl this entire site that we provide in the website parameter, but it's only going to end up downloading the websites that have this specific pattern. But if we use these both together, it's going to work just as fine. The only difference here is that it's not going to include this starting URL. Keep in mind, if we were to only use the data URL filter, it's going to take a lot longer because it's crawling the entire site. In this case, the entire site being the starting site over here. Next, we do want to pass in the XPath pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply copy this vector and I'm going to call this uh, pattern. Well, in this case, it would be the XPath 
me see it right here, actually. Let me see if I can find it. It would be the extract XPath pattern right here. And it's going to be equals to this right here, the character vector. And then also another parameter of interest would be the pattern's names. Now you don't need this, uh, but this is going to be helpful. So this is going to just be, uh, it's gonna help us give us those column names um, for each of the uh, elements that were extracted. So this is also a character vector. So in this case, the first element was a title. So I'm gonna say title. Um, the second parameter was the meta score. And then the third parameter was the user score. Awesome. And now let's go ahead and run this. Now keep in mind that a new variable has been created called data. And it's simply a list containing all of the scraped contents. So if we look through some of the values here, you're going to notice that it extracts the game name, the meta score, and the user score. So this is essentially those name patterns that I was referring to. It's giving them those names. And this is going to help us identify what those values are. Now, if you notice, the first one was 105, and then the second one when I ran it is 103 values. And this is where you can pass in one more parameter to really explicitly find those URLs from a specific zone. And in this case, in our homepage, we're just interested in looking through the uh, links over here in the box just right here in the clap summary. So we're not interested in any of these links. So you can actually further specify the uh, area that you want the crawler to look through for those links. So in this case, if I were to write another XPath pattern in here, I'll use another parameter called uh, crawl zone XPath. And I'm going to simply pass in that XPath pattern. So it will be slash slash. In this case, it was a, a TD and the class attribute was equals to clamp summary wrap. We have this. And then also another parameter of interest is called, um, is the delay. So the requests delay. This is just simply going to add a small buffer between each request. Now by default, this is zero. Um, so I'm just gonna change it to 0.1, just to make sure that there is a very small buffer between each uh, process without really causing a huge delay. So if I were to run this, and now that it ran, it's only returning exactly 100. And that's actually what we need because if we look through the games, it actually has exactly 100 on this page. So that's exactly what we're going to need. So if we look through the data, it has that. Now the problem here is that this is a list. How do we convert this into a data frame? So the way to do that is we can actually refer to the um, the data, fun uh, the actually what we're going to do is we're going to create a do call. And what I'm going to do is we're going to do the call, do, uh, we're going to do uh, the R bind. We want to do the R bind and then we want to pass it on to the data here. And then we want, what we want to do is we want to just call it, we want to pass in this into a data frame function. So what this is going to do is it's going to take this list perform the rbind function on this list and then convert the entire thing into a data frame. So if I were to run this and we click on DF, we now have a data frame consisting of the title, the meta score and the user score. So we finished a lot of the bulk work. One more thing remains. The question is, how can we loop through all of these pages? How can we obtain all of these pages and then perform the crawling on all of the pages to do the same thing for us? Well, that's very simple. We're going to have to make an initial crawler that's going to get these pages for us. And then we're going to pass this into a map DFR function that's going to loop through the pages and put this all into one big data frame for us. So first, what we need to do is just like how we determine the patterns for these games, we need to determine the pa pattern for the pages. So if I were to flip to the second page, we're going to notice that a new value has been added to the URL, which is a question mark page equals to one. And then the same thing would happen if we go to the, th the third page and so on and so forth. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll make another R crawler function. I'm going to set the website equals to the landing site that we have. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and extract it from here, just like that. 
And then for the crawl URL filter, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it equals to the question mark page, and it's gonna be any number from zero to nine, plus, and then put a dollar sign to indicate the end of the URL. I'm gonna set the max depth to one. Now, of course, if you have a lot more pages, you're going to have to adjust the max depth value to something larger. And then I'm gonna obviously set the save on disk equals to false. So if I were to run this, oh, I forgot the equal sign right there. So if I were to run this, and what that does is it will collect all of the values. So we have the first page, the second page, third page, and fourth page. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put that in an object called URL list, and I'm gonna set that equals to the um, index dollar sign URL. So now we have a list of those URLs. So now just as a last step, I'm gonna create a new variable called final df. I'm gonna take that function we've written for the R crawler with a couple of, of adjustments. So we first, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure this is all sitting within a map DFR function. So I'm gonna say map uh, DFR. And the first thing we're gonna pass in is the URL list. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the function that we're interested in executing. So in this case, it would be this right here. So I'm gonna paste this inside of these brackets. And instead of the website, the only thing we need to change here is the website. I'm gonna simply change it to a period, which will indicate each value from the URL list. And then last but not least, I wanna make sure that I'm passing in that DF right over here, because that's essentially what we want. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through all of the four pages. It's going to collect all of the data, put it in this data frame, and then it's going to put it into one massive data frame using the map DFR function. And that's what we're going to need. Now for this case as well, um, given that the max depth here is one, I'm going to make sure that the max depth is uh, set to 10, um, just so that it makes sure to collect all of the URLs necessary. Now, of course, you could still keep it at one, uh, but also given that we're specifying the patterns to look for, um, we should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, object is not found. Oh, I forgot to put a tilde sign right there, and I'm going to run it. Okay, and the web crawling has finally been complete. If we notice, we have an object over here called final df. And what this has is it has all of the games that we were interested in looking at. It came up with 395 games extracted. And if we actually go back to our pages over here and go all the way to our last page, you're going to notice that we actually have 395 games with the last games being eFootball 2022 and Babylon's Fall. If we look through this, we're going to see that we have those two. Awesome. And now one last step would be to clean up the data. So if we were to take a quick glimpse at the uh, final DF, we're going to notice that it is a data frame, but each column is a list. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this code in. And what it's going to do is it's going to first convert all of the columns into character. Then it's going to remove any TBD strings and replace them with NAs. So in this case, if you do notice, uh, we do have some TBD values in here as well. Um, we also do have an NANA value in there as well that uh, we're going to have to take care of. Um, then it's going to convert the Metascore and user score columns into a numeric value. Then it's going to reorder the uh, page ID in the proper order, and then it's going to also remove the row names. So if I were to run this, and now if we look at the final DF, we're going to see that all of the data is um, has been properly um, adjusted and formatted. Um, so now we can take this data and we can do some further analysis with it. And that's it for web crawling. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a great day.